Roy and Crow throw dignity to the wind and don blue hairnets and overalls to gain access to the super secret Aimpoint Red Dot site facility. We reveal the lucky winner of the Holland and Holland shooting cinema competition. Plus, Paul explains how he joints up a Chinese water deer, and we see if the new Shooter King Hunt Flex suit stops 006.5 Creedmoor from getting to the Christmas ball. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. It just amazes me. I mean, you come in here and obviously the, the precision and the attention to detail of everything that's being assembled here and, and the accuracy to which they're doing it. And obviously it's just being tested and tested and tested on every part of the process. And I think that leads us to, you know, what we were talking about earlier is that you just don't have the, the returns, do you? You know, the, the, product, the product goes out and it stays out there in use. You're getting what you pay for. Absolutely. Spot the difference. Or should that be red dot the difference? This is an aim point, however this is not. The dot moves, there is no fixed position, which means a lot of missing the target and missing the point. Aim point created the red dot sight for fast reaction shooting, so no matter what angle you see the dot in the optic, it remains on target. To prove there is even more to an aim point than meets the eye, the guys from the Swedish company have invited two special guests to have a peek behind the scenes at the production line. Roy and Andy have both been to the headquarters before, but never in here and not since the new development and expansion. This is rare for anyone outside the Aimpoint inner circle, especially with a camera. There is still a lot of the process that must remain a mystery, Aimpoint's orders, but we can see the gluing. Yes, there's gluing, but not just any glue. This is more super than super glue. So obviously we've just been going through the, the process of, of gluing the lenses in and I didn't realise how critical it was to make sure that they're, they're in there securely. I mean obviously from a, a shooting aspect you want to make sure that your product is, is well made. I just couldn't believe the G's that we were talking about. You've obviously got to make them for a standard so you're making them for a, up to a military standard and then for sports shooting, for hunting, we're yeah. using exactly the same product. So yeah. we're using exactly the same site, made to the same standard. Yeah, the hunting and uh, military products are made to a certain extent, very much the, the same way. Yeah, yeah. And uh, some of the components differentiate a little bit okay. in them. So when it comes to something like you know, fixing the lenses in, that's done in exactly the same process. Yes. Um, and, and what were you saying with the, the Gs there? Because I just couldn't the believe G's, the figures you were talking uh, about. For the, for the Acro, we tested it uh, with the Calibre 40. Right. And the Gs are 7,400. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then that's down to what in a hunting rifle, so an average? Uh, about 1,000. About 9.3 is about 1,000 Gs. Wow. So it's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. No, that's it. You just don't realise the forces that, that, that are actually you know, put through the scopes. Yeah. Um, you know, put through the sights like that. It's so just crazy. a lot of pressure on the glue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, no, that's and other components as well. But yeah, so it's quite yeah. hefty Gs. <laughs> Now, Andy and Roy may look great in hairnets and overalls, but we couldn't bring them all this way without some hunting. Once we are done here, we'll be heading north to a golf course near Gothenburg, where we'll be shooting driven roe deer with shotguns. Does that sound like we've been sniffing the superglue? It's true, and all will soon become clear. There's even a Swedish chef. 30 years. That's 30 years old? Yeah. Wow. It's still working, and it's doing the work and, uh, and good luck today. Well, you see that, it's, yeah. it's in the back. <laughs> right, back to the factory and the workforce are well looked after. When they are not in the gym, they are trained to operate multiple workstations to improve productivity and general well-being. 
Now people may not realise, but you actually came and did the academy a few years ago, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I come back ooh, about three years ago. Me and Dom uh, come out here and had a few days out here and had a great time. They really looked after us. And we had a brief look round then. Um, but since we was out here, wow, they've really changed it. It's a new building and it's just unbelievable. They really do think of their staff as well. They, they've got three uh, rotors here and they're tested, everything is tested and every little bit they do, it, like every station, every person's got their own barcode, they, they do it so that so if they get a problem, they know where that problem is and, and where it's come from. So it's been an eye opener for me. I thought it was just a case of sticking a few bits together, job done, but <laughs> farming wise, but no, no. It's, it's cleaner than your farm even. It is cleaner than my farm. They can assemble multiple models at the same time. The new Acro, the Micro H2, all alongside military sites. If it's good enough for the military, it's good enough for these two. Why don't you mechanise? Because you can't make the same quality with, uh, if you mechanise everything. We, uh, we do a handmade uh, site, so it will be higher quality. So it, that's what the endpoint stands for. Now we have a micro H2. We want to see if they are holding for, uh, for it's waterproof and everything is being right. Or you're making sure that, the, that everything is sealed and it's still got a vacuum within the, yes. within the site. So we put it here and make sure that it will be holding for 30 minutes. Okay. They have to hold the same pressure for 30 right. minutes. Okay. If this one, for example, is not holding, it's under zero. Right, something wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. Then, if then. you want to test it, we take it to the water bath. Right, okay. And put the pressure inside and see what the bubbles coming out. Okay. So we can see more. more, more yeah. yeah. So every every single site that comes out of the factory goes through this, this stringent testing. This okay. Aimpoint started producing sites in the mid 1970s and now hunters, target shooters, police, and military use about 3 million of their sites. That's a lot of units. So you'd imagine the service department may be run off their feet. Not a bit of it. The staff responsible for spares and repairs only work part-time. We have our laboratory that uh, sites go through uh, shock tests, temperature shock, crop tests, etc. So we have all the equipment to test it full up. Are you just taking one out of the batch and testing each, each through, or is it, is it just a, a general standard that... It's, it's a batch from uh, each month, from each model. Right. So everything, every site that you, you sell, if there is an issue with it or a problem with it, and it needs repairing or putting right, then it comes back through here? Yeah, the service will be done here. Okay. Yeah. And, and as we can see, there's not really a lot going on in here, is there? No. <laughs> no. And it, I mean, if you do have an issue with the site, what would it be? Just a, a switch going something, or...? Yeah, it could be a switch broken, uh, incorrect handling, right. not tighten the battery cap, etc. A lot can happen during 25, 30 years old. Used, yeah. Just replace the switch and good to go again. And if there is an issue, I mean, what's I mean, obviously, it's not uh, this department is not under strain, so it would be a very quick turnaround anyway. If anything did have to come back. Yeah, a couple of days. Yeah. Sometimes even the same day. We are cleaned, assembled, and now it is the final stage. So Daniel, yeah. this is sort of the end of the journey really, isn't it? This is the end of the journey. This is where the site ends up, either a, a hunting site or a military site. It ends up on a pistol or a black gun or a shotgun or a rifle. It's put in a box. The box is put in a bigger box. <laughs> and then it's off to the shipping department and sent off to the, to the world. With the tour over, the guys find themselves in the VR room. It doesn't seem to matter who comes to the Aimpoint factory, they all end up here. And with good reason. Tomorrow we head north to experience a truly traditional Swedish hunt. In the meantime, for more about Aimpoint, visit aimpoint.com. Thank you, Andy, and thank you, Roy. And next week our Batman and Robin will be off to hunt row Swedish style with Aimpoint. Next up, our very own Joker. It's Aaron on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The future of grouse shooting is in the balance. 
animal rights campaigners, including BBC TV's Chris Packham and the RSPB, are pushing the Scottish Government for a ban ahead of a report into the sport of grouse shooting. The RSPB has revealed new claims about hen harrier persecution, including a bird found shot at Wanluckhead, southern Scotland. However, sources at Holyrood say that Scottish First Prime Minister Nicola Sturgeon is sitting on the Werity report into grouse shooting until after the election. A seven-year legal battle between two gundog trainers has come to an end. At its heart is the question over whether you should be allowed physically to discipline your dog when training it, or if you should only be allowed to use reward-based training. In the final court case on Friday the 6th of December 2019, an appeal at Plymouth Law Court against a restraining order granted to the dog trainer who cannot be named for legal reasons against dog trainer Christopher Upton, the Crown Prosecution Service offered no contest. The case was dismissed. Speaking outside the court afterwards, victorious Mr Upton says the corrective training argument has become overheated. Unfortunately, it's not just the gun dog training world, it's the dog training world. It's massive at the moment. There's death threats going out on the internet. People, people lives being ruined because people are, are fighting in frenzied attacks on people who don't agree with their ideology. It's, it's more than, than one person, it's, it's the bigger picture. The government are trying to ban us from training and using discipline. Discipline is part of life in everything, the same as me today in court. If I'd gone to court and been found guilty, that's discipline, right? And that's part and parcel of the structure of the law of the land. If it's within the law of the land and it's not cruel, I can tell you that my videos have taken off big time because I'm out there showing people. So yes, we're arguing the fact that we should be allowed to give discipline and correction, but not cruelty. And if you're accused of cruelty, that's a completely different thing. Then it gets personal. Now, it, now it's a civil matter. So, what do you think of disciplining your dog? Our video about the case on Facebook, we asked our viewers what they think of corrective training. So far, the results are 92% say keep it, 8% say keep it but ban smacking, and nobody wants to ban it. A Woodcock geolocator found washed up on a beach tells the extraordinary story of one bird. Found in West Wales by a bird ringer who knew exactly what it was, the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust reveals it's from bird number EY08279, tagged a few miles away in March 2013, who flew at least four migration flights of around 1,740 miles to and from Yaroslav in Russia, a lifetime migration of more than 6,000 miles. Flying guns is becoming more difficult. Following a mass of restrictions imposed by European airlines in 2018, there are new changes to the transport of firearms, including a raft of new changes from airlines, including TAP and Lufthansa. Please check our website for details. Link is in the description below. The National Farmers Union has lodged a complaint with the BBC over its promotion of veganism over Christmas. Hashtag Xmas Life is a short promotional film which includes cameos from presenter Graham Norton and is themed around families and friends staying in their pyjamas all day and watching television. One scene features a turkey wearing a green knitted jumper addressing an audience of similarly dressed turkeys and pointing to a map of Britain, decorated with photographs showing vegetarian and vegan Christmas dishes. With the general election on Thursday, one sporting animal has cast its vote. Labour's Carl Turner is canvassing for votes in East Hull. He tweeted, I met this young man taking his pet ferret for a walk. Bit me. Twitter reacted in style, with many calling for the ferret to become Prime Minister. Thanks to David Kearney for sending us this story. A student from Coventry has come up with a novel way of promoting riding helmets. Veterinary student Georgina Grace, age 19, stripped off and filmed herself riding her horse, called Blue, naked apart from boots and the all-important helmet. Now family and friends have nicknamed her Lady Godiva. Two young shots have each won a car. Congratulations to 13-year-old Bethany Norton and 16-year-old Ron Chipman on winning the TCS Grand Final 2019 at the Oxford Gun Company. 
Bethany, who has been shooting for just nine months, shot 17 out of 25. Ron shot 23 out of 25. For more about this Young Shots program, go to theschoolschallenge.co.uk. Want to know where your local clay shot is in the UK? There's a new map on Google which lists the Sunday clubs and coaching as blue and the shooting grounds as yellow. Links in the description below. Go green, eat a squirrel. That's the advice from Forestry Commission Chairman Sir Henry Studham. He says growing more trees is vital to curb climate change. But he says tree planting is being hindered by grey squirrels which chew up the trees. And if other control measures fail, we should cull them and use them for food. When a hunt supporting pub in Lincolnshire was hit by negative reviews from Antis, the hunt reacted. Antis hit the Marabone and Cleaver with a series of negative reviews because it allows a local hunt to meet there. Hunt supporters and pub goers were so outraged by its treatment they have hit back with overwhelmingly positive reviews. Plus, it is owned by popular local motorcycle daredevil Guy Martin. A pet drake from Devon called Dave has a tricky dicky. Dave the Drake's owner, Josh Watson, noticed that Dave was suffering from an infected penis, made worse by trying to mate up to 10 times a day with his fellow ducks, Dora, Frida and Edith. A vet has now removed Dave's penis, but, says its owner, the ducks now reject its advances and the bird seems to have lost the will. Does handling lead bullets cause blood poisoning? One Norwegian shooter says no. Former Olympic medalist Harald Stenvag has shot 1.2 million rounds in the last 55 years. He gave a blood sample for testing and a laboratory in Oslo reports that he has less concentration of lead in his blood than the average Norwegian citizen. A Swedish hunter who lost his gun license has now been charged with pulling down a high seat. The unnamed man was caught after photographs of him carrying out the vandalism was sent to his local hunting club. He's awaiting trial. Thanks to Per Homseth for sending us this story. An animal rights organisation has brought out a scientific paper, and guess what? It says that hunting is bad for wildlife conservation. Co-authored by a member of animal rights organisation Born Free, the report is published in the magazine Biodiversity and Conservation. Based on research at the Jar Reserve in southeast Cameroon, the study finds that wildlife abundances decrease because of what it calls ongoing hunting. Unfortunately, in an attempt to push its animal rights agenda, it muddles regulated hunting, which scientists agree is good for wildlife, with local poaching. Governments around the world are struggling with wild sheep. In New Mexico, USA, a landowner bringing on rare dull sheep says his herd is under threat from the local ban on coyote shooting competitions. The coyotes kill the sheep that live on Donald Chavez's ranch. Meanwhile, in Norway, the Norwegian Food Safety Authority is banning a farmer called Janet Reza from owning Mouflon unless they have ruled she can find a way of taming them. There is a new mobile phone app to help Inuit hunters in northern Canada avoid unpredictable sea ice. Developed under the guidance of the Arctic Eda Society, the app aims to draw on the catalogue of traditional knowledge that has helped the Inuit thrive in an unforgiving region. Named after the Inuktitut word for sea ice, Siku, it's intended to provide an all-in-one system of critical information for hunters. A US state plans to outlaw children from using guns to fend off home invaders. A new bill in Virginia proposes that a person might not be able to protect themselves via an accessible firearm until they're 18 years old. The RSPB has picked up another lucrative gamekeeping contract. Introduced mice are eating albatross chicks on Gough Island off Tristan de Cunha in the South Atlantic. The RSPB is a part of a group sharing £9 million to eradicate the mice. Brazil has a wild boar problem. This film from SLE Farms shows a herd of animals running for cover out of crops. It has gone viral on the internet. Javan rhino numbers are up. Indonesia's Ministry of Environment and Forestry has announced that the world's only remaining population of Javan rhinos has increased to 72 individuals from 50 10 years ago. And finally, a man in Manchester putting oil in his car gets a foxy surprise.
Ryan Robinson put his tea on the pavement whilst he carried out the work. A fox approached the brew and made the only comment it saw fit. There have been a few more comments about the fox on Facebook. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking for stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, Aaron. Now, last week we offered one of you the chance to take a friend to the Holland and Holland Shooting Cinema, where Andy Cray went in advance of his wild boar trip. Well, I've put your competition entry names, more than 500 of you, into my special competition prize winning finder app. Here you all are. And I'm going to press choose, and the lucky winner is John Cherry. John Cherry, H and H Shooting Cinema is the correct words to write in the description below. So John will be in touch with you and you can get to go there sometime in 2020. Now we also came up with a special Field Sports Nation exclusive offer last week and we have a few left over. J Bolt Designs normally sells a pair of antler cufflinks and a cartridge key ring for £80. We are selling it for £50. Click on the link in the description and for more from J Bolt Designs go to jboltdesigns.com. Next up, with a new Bond film coming out, we came up with an original idea to show how waterproof Shooter King's Hunt Flex outfit is, starring Paul Childerly. done Paul and we have another competition if you want to win a Shoot King Hunt Flex outfit like the one Paul was getting soaked in or not getting soaked in in that film all you've got to do is write Shoot King Hunt Flex into the description below and we'll enter you into a draw and I will pick a winner sometime in the new year. Now essential skills dear butchery Paul is cutting up a Chinese chop chop childerly style So basically we got some Chinese in here, these were shot yesterday, these two, these were shot this morning. Um, obviously what we normally do is take the front ends off um, as we're doing them, uh, so it just makes, saves time. Um, the front ends we normally, if they've been shot a little bit, we tend to use them for dog meat. So this is what we basically got, is uh, three joints, a uh, saddle and two haunches. <clears throat> we, um, we dress all our own, now game deer didn't have any. Um, and we have a lot of people that come to stalk them, they take a lot of game home with them. So it's all about efficiency with us, minimum time, maximum output. So with the venison we tend to do haunches and the saddle, or we fill out the saddles um, for the two, two loins on the back. Basically through just underneath the hip bone, down the side, the spine, and then to the front, and then the rest of it's just simply Bone it out, peeling it off. Do you do this with all the deer? Um, yeah, basically. Um, not so much the fallow. We, we, we tend to, uh, with the fallow deer, it does tend to go to more to the game dealer. But the small, the small species, with the muntjac and the Chinese, we tend to do all of this, every single one, basically. So three strong. Three joints and everything else is minced. Yeah, basically minced or, or we uh, use it for basically raw game meat for the dogs. 
your line out there. This is a tricky one, the other side. Why? There's nothing to hold against. Yeah, unless you're left handed. <laughs> Coming from the opposite side. Now with these, because they're so tender, they're very, very difficult to take the silver off. And I will demonstrate, but I ain't gonna guarantee it's gonna go perfect. Because it, <laughs> it is very difficult um, to get it off. There you go, there's your silver. It's all chewy. And one. I think you've done quite a good job with that. Oh, thank you. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> a bit on this side, I can feel it already. It'll be right. So obviously the ideal scenario is to leave minimum amount of meat on the on the silver as possible. So pretty tough for that really. And there's a nice clean clean cut bit of meat. Um, this is the side bit. There we go. Two loins done. Okay, so next to the haunches, two haunches on the back. With the saw, you tend to get bone dust, which can go into the meat. Um, so I've got this quirky filleting, big filleting knife, which has actually been broken quite a few times by doing bits and pieces of use it for with the, with the necks and stuff. It actually works really well as a saw. So it goes down through, goes through the H bone. Really easy. You can see there's no bones there at all. And I just run it down through. A nice clean cut. Good way of getting hair off it is actually do it with a knife. See that? The knife actually picks it up better than anything else. Not that there should be any hair on it, but the way it is. Right, there's a few things to do this. Cut it off, clean it off, and use it as a whole joint. So you've got the whole leg, that's quite a nice look. Then you've got, some people like it cut here, so it's a shorter joint, so it looks a bit, not quite so real, like a real leg. Then you can go into an actual joint, so you can cut down through the, the knee, the, because a lot of the stuff you can do, that actually a saw, which is, a, which is great with a bone and out stuff. So you go back across, and basically come up behind and then you got yourself a bit of meat there for whatever. Um, and you got yourself again, another joint, got no bone filings, nice clean, clean bit of meat. Basically, that's what I do. I normally do the haunches and fillets or saddles, easy. But then if you get it home and you want to have it as stewing steak, you can obviously take off the, the meat. If you want to do it as steaks, you basically got to take out the hip and the pelvis. Object on this object of this is obviously keeping on as much of the meat to the joint rather than the leaving it on the bone. Which easier said than done. I think it's actually understanding what the shape of the bone is for you to actually find it and think about it before going in almost. Yeah, and do you know what? It's um it's great for anatom anatomy. <laughs> for when you're obviously shooting deer. It's great for me, for, with the kit boxes and the martial arts side of things as well, because you understand bones, you understand where they are, and you know how to break them if you want to. <laughs> so, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh. the facts, 
facts. And also how easy it is to pop a bone or pop a kneecap or something. You see that, you know, that's, that's the hip bone basically, straight out of the socket. Um, you know, not leaving too much meat on there. And then you got um, the internal leg bone. This actually, that bit goes right way through, it's quite strange. You never thought it would do, but it does. Right way through, almost through to the other side. It's a really hard one to get around the back of and to make it not take out loads of meat with it. May look a bit sort of like uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Rough. Rough, but um, you know, like I say, you're not a surgeon. Which done round. Ta da! Uh. Get yourself a bone. Again, little bits of meat on it, you know. If you're that desperate, you can boil it up for broth. That's what I do a lot of the time with this, is basically take out the best steaks. So what we're gonna do with this one, we're gonna, uh, we're going to basically take the first one off. So, that's that. I'm gonna take the second one off. Nice. Mm. Take some off, good sized steaks, good thick steaks. And then we'll take the last one off. And then you've got this little bit of spare meat here, which will be stewing meat. There you go. Yeah, like I say, this is what the fillets, the two fillets that come out of the saddle. We do a lot of joints like this and like this. It saves a lot of time and effort, but we do sell quite a lot um, like this because people just do quite like the ease, the easiness of picking out the pair of fillets and, and um, straight into the oven. A lot of people take it home and do their own bits and pieces with it like this. Or when you've done about three or four hundred, five hundred a year, you sort of get used to doing it. <laughs> so David, offer me a price. <laughs> Right. Pound a pound. Pound a pound? In the fur. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Next up, from Bedfordshire to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Dave Carey Shooting is off on another of his best game shoots in Britain series. This one is close to home, Ravenswick in Yorkshire. Corvid Hunter is air gunning magpies with his Air Arms Ultimate Sporter from a hide that overlooks a magpie city tree. That's the hunter watching the prey, watching the prey. And he does okay on the pheasants. Here's a sizzle reel of Potrick 81 hunting's best driven boar moments in his home country of Poland. Let's go partridge shooting in Turkey. ATA team has the dogs, the guns, the ammunition, all the kit and big Asian scenery to find their birds. The wonderful Born 100 Years Too Late channel goes mountain lion hunting in American desert country with horses, mules and hounds. As ever, a lot of chat and scenery before you get to anything approaching action. Next up, a pest control job in an apple orchard. Line after line of trees in Serbia that has a huge overpopulation of hares. They bring in dozens of guns to reduce that population. This is hardcore. Lone Star Boars is on feral hog pest control patrol in Texas, USA with an automatic rifle. It gives you a clue about the scale of the feral hog problem here. And finally, worth retreading this film from two years ago, which is doing well on Facebook. Put out by Yeti, which makes coolers. It is the story of a Labrador called Sam in his element. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. Click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can also follow us on Twitter and subscribe to us on YouTube. And best of all, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about the show, Field Sports Britain, which is at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. Plus, you can back us. Go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash fieldsportsnation. There's a link in the description below to find out how to do that. I'll see you next week. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. Goodbye.